Can, are you on? Yes. Hello? One, two, yes. one, two. Okay. It's hard this to tell. Rachel Lillis. Hi, guys. <laughs> she plays Ash and Misty. On, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I just don't play. assume anyone knows who I am. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm Tara Sands. I played uh, yeah. Bulbasaur and a bunch of uh, other things. A lot I'm of characters. <laughs> yeah. Is this working? <laughs> yeah. Blah, 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 blah. I don't hear it. So I think today we're mostly talking about um, women in... Or, or just Pokemon in general. Um, but if you have other questions. It's a baking show. Yeah, yes. baking. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I think basically. Fighting food, on, yeah, we can talk about that. We have you um, just come up to the center mic one at a time. We might as well get started with that, and then we have plenty of time to answer. One, two. I don't hear it, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, Hi, nice to see you uh, in a different costume. Yeah. Yes? So my question is all you. How. Uh, how do you control your voice variation from when you did the Pokemon series? Do you have to sound really high to sound like a chipmunk? Are you asking about Jigglypuff? Is there a character you're asking about? How do we about? change our voices? I mean, when you do voice variation, because I know one of the episodes, both Ash and Misty was, sounds like a chip. A chip right. Mark, yes. Do we do they alter our voices electronically, or do we change our voices for each character? For each character. Right. Um, both, I guess, in depending on the th on the project, um, you you can alter the tonality of your voice. Um, that I mean, just you just kind of practice different different things, um, just like you would put on an accent. You would just practice sounding different from your normal voice. Um, and as far as uh, elect electri electronically uh, changing things, like if they pitch something up, a couple of semitones, that doesn't, I, I think that happened rarely. But in, to my knowledge, most of the time, most of the actors just altered their own, own voices, had whatever they had in their bags of tricks, pretty much. Thank you, thank, thank you for you. the question. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for the question. Because we've all trained in, um, mm -hmm. in how to use our voice, how to breathe, all of that that you take with acting classes and singing classes. So you're able to move through all of your octave. You know, we all have like really high to really low and you get all that in between stuff. So I think for all of us, with all the weirdo voices that we've done, it's just been us. Mm -hmm. um, nothing has, um, y we can reproduce it. It hasn't been because of how it was recorded. I see. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you for thank the you. question. Thanks. Thank, thank, you. thank you for the question. Hi, Hi again. It's me, Bodie Hello. Again. It's good Hi. to see you. It's also nice to see them represent woman voice actresses with Pokemon voice actresses since you are all talented. Thank you. Thank you and nice to represent <laughs> female voice actresses. Thank you, yeah. Bodie. Um, uh, what's your favorite like um, uh, Pokemon song? Oh, yeah, by the way, most of them are made by music composer John Luthor. You, you've mm -hmm. probably heard of him. What's our favorite of, of the Pokemon, any of the mu music in Pokemon? Yeah, Pokemon song. Could we say Pokemon Christmas Bash? Could no, we say, no, we, no, 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 <laughs> so, okay. no, okay, real songs. Yeah, all songs. Um, wanna be a master? Yeah, is that your favorite one? I think so. Yeah. I think I just love yelling that line. Oh, you <laughs> the se Is that the second one? I think that's the second yeah. theme song. I, I think so, yeah. I love the first one. Yeah, Classic. I gotta catch yeah. them all. My, my favorite uh, episode, Background music loop is called "Until We Meet Again." I it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun, dun. You know that one? Um, and the ocarina song from the second movie. That I love that. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good Thanks so seeing much. you. Hello. 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 My question is. Um, in doing like all the different voices of Pokemon, um, how much were you inspired by the original Japanese voices, and how much did you often like sort of veer on to doing your own thing with the characters? Good question. Uh, not, I never heard the Japanese voices um, during the audition process. I have no idea what they sounded like, so I had I didn't see any pictures either. Um, the only thing that I saw in that first audition was um, they were looping the first very, very first uh, TV episode, 
And the only thing I saw was like a two minute window of Ash and Pikachu when Ash has the pink gloves on and he's got the clothesline and he's dragging Pikachu and Pikachu runs up the tree and smiles, kind of like Tortoro, I guess. And that's all I had seen, just that, that, that part of the first episode. And that's all, that was Ash was the only, Ash and Pikachu were the only two characters that I'd seen. And everything else, the script was like, um, they had the Musashi instead of Jesse. They didn't have all of the English things. Let Ash was Alex or Casey or something Casey, like that. Casey, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they, they, you know, they, they didn't have pictures, just descriptions. So I had no idea. I personally had no idea. I don't know if you guys saw no. anything. No, I, I, I we, we had to base that audition for Ash was based on trying to match the original voice, but mm-hmm. otherwise everything else was just. And even when we recorded, we didn't listen to the Japanese. We just launched into recording. I had a, I actually had a different experience because I didn't audition for the original cat. I, had, I started in episode four uh, and I was there playing Melanie. It was like Bulbasaur's Hidden Village. And they said to me while I was there, hey, uh, listen to uh, the voice of this blue guy and see if you can sound like that. But instead of saying, Dane, 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 say Bulbasaur. Can you do that? And I was like, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> So for a lot of those, um, the, uh, so I got to play humans and Pokemon. We, I guess we all did. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the Pokemon themselves, I usually did hear the Japanese. And then I would just match that and say different things. For the humans, not as we weren't as concerned with um, matching. Mm. But I, I, I find that um, for little boy voices, uh, it's stylistically a different voice that they like to hear than Americans like to hear. So I, for women, I think sometimes we'll try to do a voice match, but for, for little boy voices, I, I think there's, uh, the originals sound a little more feminine, and Americans want them to sound a little more rugged, so I, I veer a little bit away from that. Yeah, it all depended. I think it's also time-wise, they didn't really want us to spend time listening to any of the original before we recorded, because it took up too much time. Um, so a lot of it was, we just launched in and and we had directors, so there was, it's not like we chose uh, voices really kind of out of the blue. There's definitely a lot of um, boundaries that we had to stay in, I think, in general for that. All right, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, hi. I think we, hi. I think, we, I think we can all agree that Pikachu was a big jerk in the first episode. <laughs> Well, you know, everybody gets, uh, you don't really want someone to um, be in charge of you when you've been on your own for a while. Right. So um, it's, sometimes it takes longer for us to learn how to work together and compromise. Who does this guy think he is coming in here with his green pajamas and his... <laughs> well, stylistically, perhaps, Pikachu didn't um, like Ash's fashion choices, but he grew to like them. It grew to like them, I think. Yeah. Um, my question is, uh, what is uh, James Carter like, the uh, voice of Gary? Uh, uh, you know, we didn't work a lot together on that. I think all I, I can say that. is, um, Gary is a loser, but I'm sure the actor who plays him isn't. <laughs> get it? No. I got it. Um, I got no. it. <laughs> yeah, we didn't always get to meet no, each other. We, and we yeah. also weren't... The sad thing is that we weren't in the booth together, but we saw each other like in between. Like if I worked from 10 to 2 and then Rachel came in at 2, we would see each other in passing. So we all kind of had that and not... Um, but pretty much everybody who worked on the show was great. We uh, were lucky with people who wrote the show and directed and all of that. It was an amazing time to be part of it. You could, right. I mean, you could be in the elevator with somebody and not know their name. And maybe that might be one of your coworkers. <laughs> so right, right. That, that happened a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, if that's it, uh, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank, thank, you. Well, thank, you. thank you. Appreciate it. You're so generous with the clapping Hello. here. <laughs> so sweet. Hello, y'all. Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm here to ask out of all Pokemon canons, including Pokemon Go, which gym leader do you think best represents yourself? Uh, oh gosh! I was gonna say Misty. She counts. Yeah, right. <laughs> She's yeah, a gym leader. Uh-huh. So from someone who went on such an amazing journey to find herself and then to give it all up to become a gym leader. Was she a gym leader at the end? Didn't she go back to her? I think she did. Cerulean City. Yes, I yeah. think so. <laughs> um, I don't. 
No. Um, Misty was, her sisters were gym leaders, I guess, and then she became, she took it over. So, um, but y your question uh, for real re re requires knowledge I, I do not possess. <laughs> Um, because I don't know all the all the gym leaders, because there are so many of There's them. There's so many. Yeah. Um, so I took the easy out by choosing Misty, by Misty. <laughs> whom I deeply respect. I remember liking yeah. Jazz. I played Jasmine. I remember liking her, but I don't remember why. <laughs> so, yeah, give me an adjective. Uh, do you have some in mind? Do you have a favorite? I love the your one costume, that represents by the way. you. Um, do you have any favorites of yours, or do people have some to, to shout out? Do you? Sabrina. Mm. Sabrina. Mm. Right. She was Serge. Old. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Giovanni. Wow. Is anyone going to say they like Giovanni as a gym leader? Oh, <laughs> what? Was he the a gym dark leader? side. Oh, goodness. <laughs> what? My favorite is Blanche. Blanche. Oh, wow. Yeah, I do all of these. It all comes back to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think thinking because we. You, when you're in the scene, you're thinking as your character. So I'm not sure that Ash ever really thought about much other than himself. Uh, he was helping people along the way, but I don't think he ever was like, oh, uh, you're a formidable partner, you gym leader, you surge. Um, I, I think he really just was in the middle of the battle and then kind of, um, I don't, maybe he would have cut a few people out and put them in his scrapbook. Blanche could have been one. Sabrina, that was a really kooky gym. Yeah. I'm going to mm -hmm. go with Sabrina. Yeah, because yeah. you're kooky. No, because that <laughs> all that magic and yeah. <laughs> ghostly, ghastly things happening. The yeah, the dolls. Yeah. Ooh. That was a pretty cool one. Yeah. Poke Pokemon was a kind of a different show at that point. You had Brock and Misty as little dolls in a dollhouse. And yeah. Mm. Yeah, the ideas from that. I yeah. mean, it really stretched your imagination and uh, brought us all into worlds that we never knew existed in a way. And then it led more of us, like people in this room, to go on and write their own stories and draw their own characters. And that kind of stuff gets you thinking, especially when you're 10. Yeah. And um, you don't realize how much is available to you in the world of your imagination. That was a cool episode. I have to go back to Netflix and watch season one. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Did you make your costume? She did. I asked her. Oh, yeah. It's really yeah. great. Hello. Hi. My favorite episode is the first episode of Pokemon, not just for the entire TV show of Pokemon, but probably in anime in general. Mm, I yes. think it's just extremely mm. well written in how Ash earns Pikachu's friendship and mutual <laughs> respect. Uh, what episode of Pokemon is your favorite? Well, I could definitely say the first one, uh, really, not just because I remember it the most, but um, because there's so much happens in that to really set the stage for where this whole journey is going to go. Because most of us entered into this by maybe some seeing that little DVD that was mailed out, oddly, to people's homes, um, that gave a preview, and then nobody really knew what this was going to be, but that it was something. And that first episode set the whole stage where you understood um, who Ash was as a person in terms of what he was willing to do for a friend, a comrade, um, what that relationship was going to be, the whole Professor Oak thing, his relationship with his mom. We, um, we didn't meet Misty and Brock in that episode, or did we in that one? Misty was we did. for Misty, a short right? second. Yeah. yeah, with the bike, of course. Yeah. See, I forgot. I blocked it all out. What bike? <laughs> but it set up... It set up all of that kind of stuff <laughs> that, that from there you either loved it or you didn't and you were willing to jump in or you didn't. So I'm with you. Plus, I often wake up late and wish I could go out in my pajamas. So it all worked for me in that. <laughs> um, Veronica and I still argue about the bike. No, I'm just kidding. So we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'll give it back. <clears throat> um, I, have a, I, have, I have a few uh, fav like few favorites that I really like. Um, I like the first one very much. Um, there's an episode called Tunnel Vision that I liked. Um, Ignorance is Blissy. It's kind of an <laughs> funny. That's Those obvious. Titles. The <laughs> titles were the best. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take so a chancy on me. Ch mm -hmm. <laughs> chancy operation. <laughs> yeah. Candid camera up. Oh, Candid camera yeah. up. Oh, I love them. Yeah. And uh, just, I, I'm sure there are a whole bunch more, but I liked. Um, 
I just liked episodes that, you know, Tara was saying uh, at yesterday's panel that she, you know, you're more about the, the psychology and the, the emotion and the background stories, and I like that too. I like the stories that showed people's backstories, their childhoods, why they are who they are, why they are, why they are what they like, what they are like. So, um, yeah, uh, I liked a lot of those. I like some of the battling episodes too, the World Cup. I like that series a lot. So, yeah. I liked uh, the one, well, just selfishly, I, I enjoyed when I got to sing the bulba bye because uh, that was the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, what? What am I doing? I'm singing bulbs right now? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and I just, I also thought that kind of showed such a sweet relationship between mm -hmm. the Pokemon themselves uh, without words, what you could kind of accomplish uh, character wise. It was really fun. And it was a song that said Bulbasaur. I mean, it was yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> so. There were a lot of great uh, acting opportunities and times to really, because there were so many real moments, it was great as actors. It, they were great moments to play. Um, and in a lot of cartoons, you don't have that. It's all just kooky stuff with no uh, grounding. And Pokemon had a lot of grounding. Yeah. Not bad for a show with a mouse that could shoot electricity out of its cheeks. Yeah, absolutely. And they gave right. seizures in Japan. I yeah. mean, <laughs> that's all I knew about it. Same here. Yeah. Yeah. And yet we still auditioned and worked oh, on yeah, it. Yeah, sign me up. I know. I'll do that. Sign me up. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Ninod. Hey, Okay. So my question is more toward Veronica and Rachel. I remember seeing this episode called The Song of Jigglypuff when Jigglypuff first debated. And my question is, when, for Rachel, is when, when you would sing Jigglypuff's song, you expect everybody to, to listen to the song away, but how did you feel, feel when everyone who listened to Jigglypuff's song fell asleep, sleep, and how did you feel like about, about scribbling on everyone who fell asleep on, in the booth? Was it like really funny to do that, or did you think it was kind of serious? I didn't understand it, to be honest. I didn't know what that was about. Um, I didn't under, uh, so the microphone was also a marker. And I, and then someone uh, said something, like, I, I think they had a few tidbits of information about how Japanese culture would um, overlap into the show. And apparently in Japanese karaoke, you have microphones that are also markers. And really? yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's like, yay, that's like, who doesn't love a dual functioning, you know, thing, thing. <laughs> a piece of technology. Yeah. So I was like, cool, so. Sort of right all over yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> it's like voice actors and mics don't, it's, don't mix in. Uh, well, yeah. well, I mean, like, how did you it's feel, like, when, like, Veronica, how did, how did you feel feel like when your face got scribbled on by Jigglypuff Margaret when, when your character action would, would fall, would, was sleeping? Like how did Honestly, I was asleep. I didn't feel anything. <laughs> but, no. when you, but when you woke up. <laughs> no, the thing that's, it, 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 happened it was life, so weird you? though, because yeah. you just go, I thought we were friends. And then you suddenly, you, I felt like maybe Jigglypuff was upset that somehow that beautiful voice put everyone to sleep when you should have been clapping and giving a standing ovation. So perhaps that, um, Frustration came out with being marked upon. Well, you know, they're they're only really showed only one other Jigglypuff in the series, and that Jigglypuff seemed to be really fine with people <laughs> falling asleep. So like, yeah, fall asleep so but, I can. Well, so in I most can of the episodes, you know? yeah, right. And, but but the first Jigglypuff was co in complete denial of, of its abilities. <laughs> well, it's so right. I, I'm just like. Okay, so Jigglypuff knows that it can put people to sleep. However, when it does, it gets angry. So it's fighting. It's an internal battle, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you know the a the actor in me. It's like oh Ibsen or something. No. Yeah. And um, so I I was kind of confused, and and there were you know the aspects of like oh my god, it, it's you know it's a floor wax and a dessert topping, yeah. you know, <laughs> and um, and so I thought that was a very <laughs> interesting. I thought it was very interesting, and basically. Um, there was so much about Pokemon, and I think I think everyone here can agree that when we were doing it, we could like you know like what Tara was saying. Oh, there's a Bulba song. Okay, yeah, <laughs> we'll we just, just go, go with, with it. it. Yeah. yeah, just go with All it. Right. Just That's go. Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, but you know, I was really why. I was surprised when in every episode that Jigglypuff appears. I'm really surprised that it, it, even when people are, if people are Pokemon are listening, everyone just falls asleep. I remember that one episode, like like when Jigglypuff sees the the solar like the spaceship. 
ship. I remember she was singing a song, song and then then a caterpie and a and a pidgey fall asleep. And then even though she they weren't even though Jigglypuff didn't even see see it. And I thought I thought that was actually pretty fun funny before then she scribbles on, on their right faces. on everyone yeah I think ultimately is, it was pretty funny but as actors in the moment you can't laugh at it because you have to be invested in what your character's doing but ultimately I, I do find it pretty funny um, <laughs> yeah. as a person thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank, 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 you. You. thank you thank you so much thanks <laughs> so mad yeah. if someone wrote on me I know hello hi so, um, how did you three got involved in Pokemon ever since it made its debut? I don't know. Um, I auditioned at some point, I guess for the, for some, not for the original, and I, I've never been able to thank whoever got my demo tape to the right studio. Um, I, to this day, wish I could say thank you to somebody. Uh, and I can't, so I'll just say it to you guys. Somehow they found Thank you. you. Somehow right. they did, and I just felt very, it was. I mean, my first anime job was Pokemon, so you, some of you, you guys have been do, ha, had been working for like Central Park Media, right? Yeah, um, I was recommended through an acting coach to audition for a Central Park Media anime, and from and then I I booked that, and then I worked on something else, and because of that, I auditioned for Slayers, and then um, because I was on Slayers, I got a chance to audition for Pokemon. So in that sense, it's kind of like right place at the right time. Because if my, I happened to be working with my acting coach the day that someone called to ask him if he could recommend anyone to do a high girl voice. And I think if I had gone in a day earlier or a day later, I never would have gotten that recommendation. So it, that's just chancy. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's like it is right place at the right time. Um, I I had just moved to New York City and I was going to acting school, and I answered an ad in an acting trade, and there was an audition for anime, and I showed up and I got a couple of small bit parts, and they I guess they had my name in their files, and I they called in I guess everyone that they knew of or had worked with before at that, I guess at that segment, I guess that's where my name came from. And um, they said there's a, there's something that's going to, we're going to, it's going to be on television. It's yeah. to, and, and we're like, yeah, really? Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I don't think we believe them. <laughs> we're like, yeah, I'll audition, uh, but right. It's like, yeah, we'll believe it when we're yeah. And no, but, but it was, uh, it was uh, like that. And I think they just called in everybody. And I do remember um, doing, doing quite a few callback auditions. Mm -hmm. And they were held in uh, a very small space. And I remember like 30 people crammed together in the space. <laughs> like, so yeah, I just remember uh, the, the process being just from square one like that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. My question is to mostly the voice actors uh, that did Pokemon. Is which one of y'all's voices? Uh, which which Pokemon that uh, was hardest to do? Oh, the or the, the, the creatures themselves. Yes. Right. Uh, the scratchy ones. Any any time they sounded scratchy, Bulbasaur hurts my throat, uh, <laughs> and he talked a lot. Uh, so I, you know, I'd show up and be like, please just have like three lines today. Yeah. And I just say, <laughs> and I just say, Clefairy all day, because that yeah. doesn't hurt. Uh, so yeah, anytime <laughs> they wanted scratchy, I was like, ah. And then I would go home and, you know, drink tea and rest my voice. Oh, yeah. Yours were very strenuous. Mine, Diglett, Centret, whatever. My daughter and I both did Centret. Um, she really? was very, very small. When she, I don't think that was tough on your voice. It was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Because <laughs> you were <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she was four. Um, yeah, those were all high, so it wasn't hard. Yeah, the uh, the Jigglypuff song was not easy to do because it's it's slow and you have to watch where you take a breath. And um, yeah, it just it, you know, and I had to do it to the back track, the the back music track, and sometimes that changed that the tempo wasn't always even, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, you just kind of say, oh, got to do it again. So, and the Jigglypuff voice is um, a little hard to sustain in that way. So, you had to get used to that. <laughs> but, yeah. 
Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you thank for the you. question. And these are first world problems that we have. You I know, know, we yeah. get that not hard is relative. Yeah. To, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So much of voiceover is um, getting used to the voices that you do, mm -hmm. sustaining them and breath. And, yeah, breath and and getting used to what you as you go along because how you audition isn't always what you wind up doing necessarily you right. just it's like a starting point so yeah hello ash ketchum hi. hello hi. good afternoon hello hi. <laughs> um tell us all this but it's oh oh cool. my god Crazy. that's awesome <laughs> love it now tell us that you shave that in yourself and you do it all in the mirror. No, my hair reverse. wizard does that for me. My question yeah. actually is, all three of you do things like video games and audiobooks as well. How does that differ from doing uh, voiceovers for uh, animation? Well, I would say with audiobooks, you get to read the whole book and then start it. With anime, you just go in and you don't even know what the scene is about or what the show is about or what's coming next. You just launch into it and you're, um, you're only doing your own lines. So you, you're imagining how to play off someone else. So at least with an audio book, you can kind of plan out how you're going to tell the story. Yeah, and also you, you need to ha perform it in a way that someone can sit and listen to it for many, many hours. If I went in there with the energy I used in anime, you would shut that audio book off after about two minutes, maybe not even. Right. So, you know, you have to kind of, it's a different, uh, it's stylistically just different and vocally different. I don't, I don't want to annoy you, you know, like, if I went in there and talked like this all, oh all the time. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm sick of my own voice anyway, but, <laughs> so yeah, you, uh, you, it's, a, with, a, with all those things, video games too, so you're, you know, depending on what type of game it is, um, how high stakes it is, how, uh, games now are like movies, um, so it's, it's a very different ty style of acting than a, an anime series. So it's sort of resetting yourself. I mean, in a given day, we might go from job to job and, and just stylistically have to reset our brains and be like, okay, I, um, I'm talking to a six-year-old now. Okay, this is a game that hopefully only people over, over 18 will play. <laughs> uh, you know, performance-wise, you, you gotta, it really it's very helps, different. and we talked about this, thinking about who your audience is. Um, is, you know, a, a, a teenager in a car gonna be listening to this audiobook? Okay, what? what kind of mood <laughs> should I set? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with, um, when, you're, when you're doing an audiobook, it's, it's sometimes similar to prelay animation because a lot of those scripts are written with a lot of stage directions. So in order to do that, you have to visualize what your characters are doing because you're not doing ADR. You're not seeing it on the television monitor first. So I, that's all, that sometimes occurred to me that that would be similar. Um, anime and video games are similar to each other because it's a lot of starting and stopping. It's a lot of timing. It's a lot of technical things. When you're doing an audiobook, it's just like you're you're flowing through and you're you keep going as as much as possible. And there's not a lot of tweaking. You just want to get the narrative, like what Tara was saying, just be in your audience's mind. And um, I've I've heard people describe audiobook narration as like um, like, uh, like kind of conversational. And well, I was going to say grueling. Kind of grueling. But <laughs> <laughs> it's exhausting. It, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy work. Yeah. People, there are people out there who specialize in audiobooks, and they're, they're just remarkable at it. They've, they have amazing uh, stamina when it comes to that. Um, video games take a lot of stamina, but it's like a d whole different timing. It's a whole different segmentation of the script. So um, when you do different jobs, you kind of have to train your brain to, okay, we're gonna do this now. So yeah, um, yeah that's, a, that's a good question because you know they do overlap a little bit, but they are very distinct ways of doing voiceover. Yeah, all yeah. great. It's great yeah. to be able to work in everything, yeah. um, but some of it is more in your imagination than but the skill set doesn't translate. I mean, I know people who say, oh, I do voiceover, so I want to do this. I go, it's, it's a different skill. Like, a lot of my work now is dubbing live action television. And I, I've heard people who work in anime tr try to do it sometimes, and I'm like, it hurts. It, it doesn't work with the way that a, ma a human mouth <laughs> moves. Yeah. So I've, I have to just, re I, I have to relearn that style of acting. Mm -hmm. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Uh, so, where are your experiences with uh, voice acting changing over the years, especially 
working so long, like not just uh, tech, but fandom, business, all that? Well, that's interesting how everything has changed. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I would say one thing that's really changed is how much people can record at home or away from the place where the show is being done. In the very beginning, back to Pokemon, if you weren't in New York and able to come into the studio, you lost the job. Now, you could, I don't know about Pokemon specifically for this, but you can start a job in New York, and I have some things that I started in New York and I moved to LA and I can still record there at home or in a studio. Anime? So, uh, they let you? just stuff in general. Oh, okay. Oh, in general. Yeah, I'm not giving specifics here. Oh my God. I'm not, I'm not going to give away everything. No, no, no I mean, I in just, this just in, yeah. no, no, not, I'm not saying anime at all. Yeah. Um, but just in, am I saying anime? Please. I've never been allowed to do anime from home, unfortunately, but yeah. Anything yeah. with a picture. Yeah, gotta be in a I did studio. one project where I was watching on my iPad and matching the flap as I recorded it to that. And then <laughs> that's unusual, yeah. That's not how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> but this project did not need anything more technical than that. Right, right, right. But so the point is, yeah. in some cases, yes. Um, but a lot of stuff, it's, if it's just voice, you know, you can be anywhere. I can record something now on a travel mic and send it to mm -hmm. something for, you know, stuff. Yeah. So that is something that s Technology. five years ago, you didn't know we could do that. When I moved, we weren't, we weren't sure I could keep doing some projects I was on, for instance. That's changed a lot. Um, now a they lot. expect us to be prepared <clears throat> to work from wherever we are. The timelines are very different for me. Yeah. Like it used to be like, oh, you have a week to do this. Now it's like, could you do, do this at an, for, in an hour from home? Right, <laughs> so right. Squeeze things in. Impressed. Yeah. I, I I think social media changed everything. You know, we worked in a Pokemon bubble. We we knew people were watching the show, but we didn't interact. Like there wasn't this, <laughs> there wasn't Twitter. Right. You couldn't ask a question. I. Uh, right. When people said, "What about your fans?" I was like, "What fans?" <laughs> right. Fans. <laughs> Um, and in, in some ways, a lot of the reason I got into voiceover was I liked being anonymous and I, I'm private and, you know, I'm talkative and what, but I, I liked the anonym, I liked that I could walk down the street and I didn't have to worry about, and you know, being noticed or whatever. And now we're, um, kind of expected to, to be on Twitter and to have a bazillion followers and now with casting. They look and see, oh, how many followers does this person have? And I'm like, oh, and it this is exactly what I didn't want to with right. voiceover. Because it does affect who gets cast it's, nowadays. It's a, it's a shame kind of because it's not always it's about not real. the best person for the role. It's about bigger other things. And and I love being here with you guys, but there's like also a part of me that just wants to be on my couch in pajamas and be like, nobody look at me. <laughs> have some downtime, right? <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, I think they, they covered it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, things have definitely changed a lot. And there are more roles for women now in some ways. Oh, thank you. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, my question was, when you were doing voice recordings for Pokemon, was there any difference in the production quality when doing the episodes versus doing the films? Because, you know, the animation is a bit better in the movies. Yeah. Right, Did you right. have to do anything different for recording for films? We were in a different Um, we were in a in a dubbing stage for the movies, well, for the first movie, and for the second. Second, I think. For the yeah. first you and second, what yeah. That is? Uh, the dubbing a uh, dubbing stage is a like a large like a large room. Um, it has um, it, it's quite large, and it has a large screen, and you are quite far away from the screen as compared to dubbing the TV series, which in our experience was largely in a small confined booth. Sometimes very and small. Very Sometimes very small. The, yeah. the monitor was probably maybe about 13 inches. It, the TV at your house. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 like a kitchen TV. Yeah. <laughs> Did the actors and actresses have more interaction when, during the, when doing the films, or was it still all separated? Like the all episodes? separate. Oh. Always separate. But it, yeah. was, it was like a fan, like to go from the small studio to do the TV show, to like the first day I remember recording the movie, it yeah. felt like we, I mean, I, I, it was like, you felt like rock stars. It was like, we, it got real. It got you real. Know? That's, a, that's yeah. a way to say it. 
Yeah, it felt it felt strange to me. Yeah. I felt like I was a mile away from the mm -hmm. screen. Yeah, and it was gigantic, like a giant movie screen. It was so weird. And we were in the dark. Uh, the aliens are landing. <laughs> Nobody get on the ship. No, 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 we should. No. <laughs> well, some people follow Tara. Okay, we're safe. Just until the event. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I and I'm centrist in this. Yes, <laughs> in this, yeah. in this so debate. you're in between, like you yeah. might get on, you might not. Get on. Might one one foot on, one foot off. Right. Um, so what you were anyway. saying? <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So the screen was gigantic, and we were in the dark, and the script was lit by the little light, yeah. and we were just like, and then the characters were huge, and the mouth flap was gigantic, so you could really see it. Really, is it me? When you're looking yes. at the tiny screen. Um, you're, you're really trying to figure out mm -hmm. what's going on. This was, I don't know, it was cool. It, it was a little yeah. bit like experiencing the movie in, if you were in the audience, in maybe like yeah. the, the sixth row, and with a slightly smaller, well not slightly, like a smaller screen. Because I remember there, there were scenes that were very dramatically animated that you could really feel, that I couldn't imagine dubbing if they were on a little, little yeah. screen. Yeah, I remember when Ash runs up, he's running and running up those stairs and, and towards the end, I, I think it's gotta be me. Um, and then he's like, uh, and, uh, and going through all that stuff. And, and it, you're in the movie then. And it was so much, cause a lot of that stuff, we just watched it and, and just filled it in. So you didn't watch it first. And it was, it was so great. Um, and when I watch the movie now on a big screen, um, I feel like I'm back in it. You know, I can remember yeah. mm -hmm. acting it out. So yeah, it was really cool. We were really young, and to walk into a place like that for me was um, intimidating and exciting. Not that the show wasn't exciting, but that you're right, it got real. Like there was something yeah. about that place that I was like. <gasps> but at the studio, it was l it was less than ordinary. It was yeah. like you wouldn't think that we were working it was on dirty. something. It was you wouldn't think we were working on something that was popular or that was going on TV or something. It was right. just a, a thing. So you went to work and you no did snacks. your job and, yeah. and you're invested in it, but it's... No, it wasn't until like later that there were good snacks there. Like, yeah. That's how I gave yeah. the studio. But what? It, yeah, got, so it, it was extraordinary. Yeah. No, working there you got drinks. Really? Like, drinks? Water. They had water from the yeah, bubbler. Water, but I'm yeah. saying the, the other ones, sorry, but they had water. <laughs> yeah, I don't think... <laughs> like, did it have water? I don't remember anything I don't there. Think so. I think we just brought our own stuff. Yeah. I remember the first day was so <laughs> freezing cold. I had like three sweaters. I didn't bring any sweaters. I had to go get a sweater. Yeah, like it was so awesome. cold. It was anyway, the least those are the days. Job yeah, <laughs> I know. For the all eight years. <laughs> awesome. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Was that too much information? <laughs> but it's fun to reminisce about because yeah. it really. I we never talked about it then. Until we got to the Ziegfeld, I don't even think it hit. It hit yeah, me. that's right. Because when we got to see the premiere in New York. At like the oldest movie theater. And we yeah. all just, and we got the jackets. Yeah. And it was, uh, yeah, it was really cool. It was exciting. It's me again. Hi. Hi. My question's for Rachel specifically, but anyone can answer. Uh, you voiced Jigglypuff sometime back in 1998 and 1999 for mm -hmm. Super Smash Brothers on the Nintendo 64. And ever mm -hmm. since then, they've been using the same voice lines ever since, mm -hmm. 20 years oh. and counting. Mm -hmm. So my question is, is that like a huge blast from the past for you if you ever, whenever you hear that there's things like 20 years down the road, <laughs> they're still using it? Um, <laughs> blast from the past. Oh, that's one way. Of uh, that's one way of looking at it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they own us. Um, I, I don't really keep up with it, to be honest. I don't know what's going on. I don't know uh, that the that those um, loops are being used. Um, I never hear about it ever until after the game's released and then somebody might like now. say something on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. no yeah, check arrives. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. no, you know, no, no check arrives, no, no uh, residuals. Um, just uh, somebody who has purchased the game will tell me, oh, you're in the credits. So, um, I, so I don't uh, think about it. Um, until it's uh, un until someone brings it up, and if someone does bring it up, it's like, well, yeah, okay, uh, <laughs> you know, it was a long, it was a, it was a long time ago, and um, yeah, so yeah, I, I wish I don't really know how to answer because it's it's something that I, I don't 
play video games very much myself. Um, I'm sure there are quite a few people here who do. Um, and I've never played any Pokemon game other than Pokemon Pinball. So oh, I didn't um, play that. That's cool. And it's I didn't know that was a thing. It, it, oh, Tara. <laughs> I'm a Tara, it's a lot of wow. fun. It's a lot. Of, it's a f it's a fun it? game. Um, there there are no voices in the game, <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah. it's fun. Uh, there there are no voices in that game, but you know it's it's like that's a fun one. If anyone who hasn't played it, I recommend it. Um, it's the it. only one I've played, so it was the only one I would recommend. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but it's kind of a yeah. Tara's got to go. Um, it, but it's kind of an ego boost because you can literally score billions of points. So hey, so. Um, that's all I know about the Pokemon gaming world, unfortunately. Um, the gaming world is vast and wide, and it's, uh, I don't know how anybody keeps up with it. So that's one of the many, many, many things that uh, just is a dizzying cloud. So no, I, I, I don't really know what's going on with that. What <laughs> is yeah. cool is that the yeah. voice goes on well, and that it stays say. out there, which is great. It's weird as an actor to know that your voice is going into places that you didn't know. And um, and so that is always kind of a weird thing, but it's pretty cool that they're that it's still involved in Smash Brothers because that's that's people like that, right? Yeah, Smash I Brothers. assumed. I yeah, assumed right. I mean, that's <laughs> so it's really neat. For you. Ethically, it's a little weird, but you know, in other ways, it's cool that if I'm making a kid smile, because you know, I'd find my voice in different toys and things, and I'm like, you know, what, this is making a kid happy. I wish it was also. Making making me happy, me yeah. happy. <laughs> right? <laughs> but my landlord happy. It will outlive, you know, this is a show that's going to outlive us, and um, well, not I, me. <laughs> I'm going on for forever. a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I, I think we're all really grateful to have been a part of it. I think there's totally obviously cool. businessy other junk that gets in the way of us just being like, oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but it's a good question, and it's cool. I mean, yeah, yeah it's 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 a tricky question for that reason, but. Yeah. Now you're gonna have to learn how to play it. Yeah, so you can. <laughs> and yeah. I gotta go play pinball, so I have to leave. <laughs> they <Thank> probably you. <laughs> they probably have it here somewhere. I, yeah. The university that I've played, like, I've been to the pinball museum in Vegas. Like I've been to wow. a lot of. Wow. I've never seen it. I'm like sweating now. Okay. Thinking about it. We might have to go next at this weekend point. in yeah. Banning, California. There's a huge pinball expo. Like, and I'm going. What? <laughs> no, I'm scared. Oh, that's pretty neat. Let's Sorry talk. if my question brought you down. I didn't mean it. Like, wow, no, 20 no. years. No, but it's a, it's a no, cool no, no. thing. No. But it's, the thing is, is multi-layered because as actors, we get taken advantage of a lot. Well, and it's so great for you guys to understand that too. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I don't... Uh, that's, that's, um, that's kind of a difficult topic for me, to be honest. It, it is a, it's kind of hard for me to talk about. This is probably the most honest I've ever... Because uh, it's never really come up. Um, it comes up on Twitter, and I don't know how to answer. So I, I, it's 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 kind of a difficult subject for me. Um, so I, I wish I could think of a way to phrase it in more constructively. But um, for me, it's it's more of an emotional thing. So, um, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a good question. Yeah, it's, it's we definitely. should probably, as a team, at some point, think of like a party line way to answer these yeah. questions because they are tricky questions they are, they for are us. They're tricky yeah. questions. It's and also, how would you know? Because you think that Rachel's in the studio now working on it. Yeah, so. you don't. I thought she worked on it. I just asked her. Yeah. I didn't know. No. Yeah. I never. I nev You know. I think it's it's pretty common for actors not to know everything that's going on with what they're working on. So, and sometimes, uh, like, like Tara said, uh, your voice will turn up in a toy or something. So, you, you know. You don't know that you did it. I mean, yeah. you don't know they're using it for that. Exactly. Pokemon, definitely, they were able to use whatever we recorded, they could put it wherever they wanted. Yeah. Um, and we didn't know where it was going. Oh, well. There it is. Onward. Yeah. No, but it's a, it's a great question. <laughs> it is a yeah, good question. Thank you. I, hope you, I hope you enjoy the game. What? I hope you enjoy the game. Hope you enjoy the game. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Thanks. Great, Thank so you. Hello. Look who's back. Back Hi. again. <laughs> Hi. I, I've Hi. already asked you this question already downstairs, yes. but I just want to ask you this so that the people have a chance to hear it. Now, what do you think of Rika Mott's medal? Because we know that she's been voicing Ash Satoshi right? since the first season and did many of the opening theme songs. No, I didn't know she did the theme songs before this because I hadn't looked into that, but I do think that her voice of Ash is the most iconic. I think 
we wouldn't be here without her, for sure. She's kept the show going in Japan, and the rest of us who play Ash around the world and all the other characters really are beholden to her and her talent. And um, I just, I think the world of her, and I've never met her, so I just know her from kind of knowing what she's worked on. Well, she's but. right back here. Yay! <laughs> um, oh, Rico. Um, yeah, but I just, I think she's amazing. Definitely the most iconic Ash voice. Well, so, well just like how, how, you, how you play Pokemon Pinball, you probably heard that already. The catch theme song from the, the blue uh, board, that's actually based on the Japanese theme song. Oh, cool. In the pinball game? Uh, yes, it, oh, it was cool. in the Game Boy game. All right. Oh. None of us have we played that, but from you guys. I know. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 I'm not trying to say that the Japanese version is better. Well, we well, it is true. Well, it is true. Uh, well, is it is true for the most part because right. other countries have their own uh, uh, TV standards or sure. regulations. Absolutely right. It's, it's just that it's just that we wanted uh, dubs to be literally translated as a way of saying thanks to them. Right. That's yeah. so true. Very true. Thank you, you, you know, so much. Especially, you know, especially, especially when Saban dubbed the Precure series as Glitter Force, which, in which the Fudariwa was already dubbed in English under the name Precure, and that, that kind of suffered from the from the four kids uh, four kids style. Oh, I worked on it. I've heard it. All. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Um, you, We're going to be downstairs so still, um, yeah. signing at our booths. We have a professional photo op coming up, and then we're downstairs yeah, come say the rest hi, of guys. today. So thank you, and it's been so nice meeting all of you this weekend. Thank hi, you. Guys. Thank you. Thank you.